All right, guys, welcome back to another Creative TD video production. Uh, in this video tutorial, we are going to cover how to add a specular highlight to our current diffuse shader that we have right now. Um, as you can see, um, I've made a couple of textures. Nothing, I haven't changed the shader, I just made a couple of textures here. Uh, we still have all of our properties that we've set up, and everything is working uh, beautifully on this this shader. So, <clears throat> what we want to do is we want to, <clears throat> excuse me, is we want to add a specular highlight onto this, and that means that we're going to actually have to switch lighting models. So let's go back to our code here and take a look at what we have. Um, oh, I actually left this in there. So currently, what we have is a Lambert shader. We're using the Lambert lighting model, so let me just save that. Yep. All right. Right now, this, this line of code right here, this surface, surf, Lambert, determines what type of built-in lighting model that we're going to be using. Now, Unity has provided us with two lighting models, Lambert and Blin Fong, mostly just because they are the most common uh, lighting models used in, in uh, game development. Um, even though nowadays, um, development studios are starting to get a little bit more fancy with uh, their lighting models and going to more physically based or image based type lighting models using ambient probes and the BRDF stuff um, uh, a lot of those types of uh, image based uh, lighting approaches anyways so what we're gonna do is we want to actually add a specular highlight to do that and to do that um, we actually need to utilize the Blin Fong lighting model so all you need to do is you just type in Blin and then Fong like that and the reason why we know this is because Unity has provided us a file called a CG include file. So let me actually go in and find this for you guys. So you go to your C drive, you go to the Unity folder, <clears throat> and inside of the editor folder, inside of data, you'll see a CG includes. These are all these pre built um, data types and lighting models that um, Unity has built for us. So what we're actually doing by declaring this line of code is we're actually accessing uh, the lighting inside of the lighting CG include file. We're accessing the uh, blend fong that's right here. So this is where you can go to find out what this function is actually doing. So when we say we're using this blend fong, right, we're actually telling it to look into this function right here and return us the C value, right, which was declared up here, and it's gathering together all the um, different lighting calculations for us. All right, and so right here, uh, it's actually calculating the half vector, which is very key to specular lighting. And I'll get more into uh, this first, but I, in this video, I just wanted to get you guys used to using the other lighting model of Blin Fong. Okay, so let's just hide this here, and we'll close that down. So that gets everything started. So now we actually have the Blin Fong lighting model, but if you save that and you come back into Maya or into Unity, you'll notice that we don't actually have a specular highlight on our model on our shader. And that's because that there's a few other um, properties we, we we need to set up so we can actually control it. All right. So let's go and do that. So let's go we need to add and this one is actually very key. You need to add the spec color, right? Cuz inside of that lighting um, function that they provided us, it's expecting a color to come in. Um, and I believe it is expecting spec color to be uh, declared. Where is it? Yeah, it's right here. See how they've got, they've already defined this property for us? That means that you actually have to name it this so that the connection is made. Right? So it's getting the spec color. All right, so if we go back to our code, so we're going to say spec color, and this is basically the specular color. All right, and it's going to be a single color for now, which is not really what you want, uh, but it's enough to get the job done for now. Uh, what you really want to do is actually have a texture that drives the color, so you can have uh, RGB variation over the whole model of specular. But in this case, what we're going to do is just tint it, and that is because this lighting model that we're using, the, the built-in blend fong, only takes a single color for um, the specular calculation. We actually have to create our own lighting model um, to pass in a texture to do the specular color. And that gets a little bit more advanced, and the next video I'm going to cover um, how to create your own lighting models, which 
basically opens up the world of of shading to you inside of Unity to create any type of lighting possible. And really, I mean, to be honest with you, it really comes down to almost um, knowing how Photoshop works because the way all this works, I mean, we're just adding and multiplying um, and getting a little bit more advanced with math. But inside of Photoshop, I mean, they, they do that basically for you. It's just hidden behind sliders and buttons and, and uh, color pickers, right? So what we're really doing here is we're kind of replicating the things that we do in Photoshop. You know, if you guys think of these as your layers, you know, you go, you step down to the next layer and process the pixels and do a multiplication or an addition. You can do an overlay. Uh, you can get into a lot of uh, different um, techniques. I mean, all those blending modes uh, between layers in Photoshop, so it's just uh, a math um, calculation, really. And so we will go over all those um, in later videos, but the next video we're going to go over how to do um, your own custom lighting model to get that started. So we just declared a spec color, and I just started it out as white. All right, <clears throat> and then what we also need is um, a spec power, and I'm going to just call this shininess because that's what they always call it in the documentation. Um, but really, it's your spec power. It, de it determines the width of. Um, actually, I'm going to call it spec power here. It determines the width of the highlight over the surface, and you'll see that. In just a bit. Now what I'm going to do is actually create a new range and I'm just going to make this 0 to 2 uh, just no, for no particular reason. Um, I just like having a, a larger range for the spec power so I can kind of overload it if you will. Make it really sharp or make it really really, you can actually do negative 1 and that'll make it really really broad. Um, and I'm just going to set it to equal to 0 0.5. Alright so now we got those two um, properties set up and they should come in here. Yep. So I have a spec of color and specular power but they're not actually hooked up with the shader yet. So I'm going to come back in here and what we need to do is we actually need to add in the float and we need to make the link between the shininess or, the, or that spec power. Now you don't have to do the spec color right because the spec color is being used I mean you don't have to actually declare spec color down here right because we're not going to actually access the spec color property in our surface function down here, right? What we're going to do is we're just going to be passing that to an already built function, the blend fun, uh, function, so it can use it. Where were we? Uh, right down here. Blend fong. Right? So we're basically just passing it into here so it can use it. So we can use spec color here and here. Alright. I know it might be a little confusing, but. Um, I just wanted to make sure that you guys saw that this is where that code is. And this is the reason why you don't have to reproduce all that code. Is it's already been written for you. And that's basically how these, these surface shaders work. Like you can, it's basically com componentized uh, lighting models from the actual um, shader calculations, right? So you can declare your own, oops, you, you can declare your own lighting models, right? And then just declare this one line of code and basically it's going to do all that for you so you don't have to have all that code in this one uh, shader right here. Hopefully that makes sense. So anyways all we need to do is declare the shininess property up here. And at that point you have everything that you need to get specular working. So what I'm going to do is right after I do the uh, diffuse texture I'm going to add in my specular. So I'm going to say o.specular is going to be equal to um, One second here. It's going to be equal to uh, shininess. Sorry, a bit of a brain fart there. It's going to be equal to shininess because it's, it's a float. It's expecting a float. Right? And this is going to actually control that width. And then to um, put in our, um, uh, our gloss or controlling uh, more of the width, right, with the texture, we can actually put in um, the gloss. Uh, function right, so we can say um, gloss, and what we can actually do is we can pass in another um, float, and this will actually mask out the different areas. And I'll explain this in a little bit more detail in just a second. But basically, I'm going to use the textures, the main textures alpha channel, to control where the the highlight is and where it isn't. Basically, all right. So what I'm going to do is say text a just to get the alpha channel, and that should give us a specular highlight. 
Ta-da! There you go. So now you got a specular highlight, and we can control the width of it. So like I said, we can really overload it if you want. Not that you'd ever want that. You can make it really, really sharp. Really, really bright. And then you can tint it so you can get different effects. It's always nice to have a little bit of color in it. All right. So that is specular. So let me explain the gloss a little bit more. So basically, let's go back into... Um, so basically, you'll see here that we have a texture um, that we're using, this guy right here. But it doesn't actually have an alpha channel. So if we look at this in Photoshop, it, I mean, it has an alpha channel, but it's all white. And that means that basically the whole area here, the whole area of the model basically has one value of specularity or, or gloss, right? We can actually control that with the texture. So what you can do is um, you can actually make a specular map and put it into that alpha channel. So I already made one here, so I have a specular map, so I'm going to launch that. And I'm going to copy this and place this into the alpha channel. The only problem with this is that you can only have, at this point, a black and white texture or a grayscale texture, right? To say wherever it's white, it's really shiny. Wherever it's uh, black, it's not shiny at all. All right. So let me save this and go back into Unity here. And you'll notice now that if I increase the specularity here, you'll notice now that we actually have really clamped down. You can see here if I overload that specularity value, you can see that the um, specularity is respecting um, the texture map. In this case, it's being inverted because it's going negative. But you can see here. So what I would do to fix it if I want to see a little bit more is I come back into my specular map here and just take some levels and try to even these guys out here. So do something like that. Maybe make the mid value a little bit more. Then you save it and go back into Unity. There you go. So now you have a little bit more specularity there. And that's how that works. Not too difficult. It's just there's a lot of uh, there was a lot of elements there that are just kind of hidden from you. Uh, so one thing just to always know is you're always going to need a specular color, all right. And you can use the alpha channel in this case for this particular lighting model. You can use the alpha channel of your main texture um, as the specular. Now you you could actually use any texture alpha channel in this case, but that's how you set it up. So hopefully um, that makes sense. And then in the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to go over how to make your own lighting model. Okay. And that will actually lead us into creating different lighting effects overall. And eventually go into the BRDF stuff. And I'll show you how to set up your own ambient cube lighting model so you can get more global illumination, uh, stuff like that. It's all, it's all pretty easy. It's just kind of knowing where the data is, knowing uh, what you have available to you in terms of what you can access and you know in terms of normals and view projections stuff like that but that's why I wanted to make these video tutorials because it's it's great to kind of document where all this stuff is um, and also it's just good uh, to have as a reference so as always feel free to uh, email me any questions or you can post them on YouTube at kennyl at creativetd.com and thanks for watching